so you're getting two videos uh, from me today basically because of the fact that well if you don't know or haven't heard by now David Davis has basically just resigned so this will be coming out after um, my last video about the the checkers summit that just happened now essentially um, I might go into greater detail now we actually know uh, the information that they agreed on um, Congratulations guys, you agreed on something you should have agreed on about two years ago. <laughs> Good job guys. Um, but the the piece that Theresa May had apparently won has now been all but shattered. Um, as I've said, David Davis, the guy who had basically been in charge of negotiating this exit and in charge of the department for leaving the European Union, has basically just resigned. Um, so we're going to go through his, um, basically this is his, rec this is his rec uh, resignation letter uh, to the Prime Minister and it's, it's kind of funny <laughs> in many ways. So hang on, there we go. So, dear Prime Minister, as you know there have been uh, there have been a significant number of occasions in the last year or so which I have disagreed with the number 10 policy line, ranging from accepting the Commission's sequencing of negotiations through to the language on the Northern Ireland uh, in December joint report. At each stage, I have accepted the collective responsibility because it is, uh, it is part of my task to find, a, to find workable compromises. Well... Having seen Davis in his um, committee hearings where he's been questioned by MPs, he has done an absolutely awful job. Davis um, has been doing a terrible job. In his, even in his own reports, it basically says the government's own plans are not workable. This was a, remember, this was the government's own plan released by its own department for exiting the European Union said that its own plans were not workable. So, yeah. Good good job. Um where were we? Yes. And because I considered it was still possible to deliver on the mandate to the re uh, mandate of the referendum and our ma manifesto commitment to leaving the customs union and the single market. Well, Basically, as we know uh, from the from the checkers uh, lock-in, shall we say, um, basically Theresa May has pretty much said, "I want to stay in the single market and customs union." Whether that will happen or not, we don't know because we haven't heard what the EU's reaction is going to be. Because this is finally something the uh, the EU can negotiate with, but we know that the EU have said countless times since the beginning of these talks you cannot cherry pick um, what you like about the single market and not have what you don't like. You either are in or you are out. This is a binary decision. It will still be a binary decision. So Theresa May saying that she wants the, um, the customs union. Oh and by the way fantastic lie told by Theresa May and um, by other MPs, uh, post pre uh, Brexit MPs, basically saying how we haven't had the power to diverge uh, uh, laws from the European Union. We have had that power. It's just Parliament and the vast majority of MPs have agreed with the laws that have been passed down by the European Union for us to vote on. That's why they get approved. So, anyway, he continues. So, I am afraid that I think the current trend of policy and tactics is making, is making that look less and less likely. Whether it is the progressive dissolution of what I thought was a firm checkers agreement in February on the right to diverge, or the unnecessary delays of the start of the white paper, which, from everything we have heard, has been... Is this white paper sounds like it's going to be another doozy, uh, <laughs> or the present or the uh, 
presentation of a backstop proposal that omit the strict conditions that I requested and believed that we had agreed. The backstop proposal was the only thing that would stop us crashing out of a hard Brexit. So you can tell what Davis wants straight away there by saying that he didn't want the backstop proposal. So the reason why he has left is because he wanted uh, the hardest of Brexits and now we are going for the softest of Brexit according to this full proposal. Uh, particularly uh, that was now guaranteed on Friday. Um, where are we? Yes, of well, the backstop proposal and admitted the strict conditions that I had requested and the believed that we had agreed and the general direction of policy will leave us at best in a weak negotiating position and an possibly an inescapable one. Well, here's the thing. We were already in a really weak negotiating position. The idea that a lot of these Brexiteers claimed pre, uh, pre the referendum and post the referendum, uh, basically saying that we had all these amazing cards to play when we didn't and that we'd have an incredibly strong hand to play we we don't because britain has always will always be really reliant on the eu it was our best source of trade um our biggest customer base um we got lots of investment opportunities uh, both to the eu and from the eu as well um you know <laughs> i can go on at length about all of them but, you know, never mind. So, him basically saying that it leaves us in a weak position, we were already in a weak negotiating position anyway. So, so anyway, he continues. The Cabinet decision on Friday crystallised this problem. Um, ironically, that's one thing he's right about, because now we... So, Theresa May has basically been having, uh, since declaring um, Article 50... Of a complete disagreement within her own cabinet. Now apparently there has been some sort of unity, although how much um, Davis's exit destroys this unity, we don't know. Um, like I say, we generally don't know what on earth uh, he is going to do, and will this unity stay? Could there be more resignations by the time I've done this video? I don't know. I hope not. Um, but if there is, good God, uh, um, yeah, like I say, this could be the first of pulling out the house of cards, shall we say. So, and now she potentially faces a rebellion from her backbenchers on these proposals. Uh, because, like I say, all the backbenchers that are opposing this all want a hardest possible Brexit. And, as I've said multiple times, that Brexit damages Britain irrevocably. Because these hard Brexiteers are driven by an ideological standpoint, not a rational one. Um, so we, where are we? Yes. So he continues. In my view, the inevitable consequence of this proposal's policies will be able to uh, make the supposed control by Parliament illusionary rather than real. Uh, I said, I as I said at Cabinet... The common rulebook policy hands control of large swathes of our economy to the EU, and it is certainly not retaining control of our laws in any real sense. And yet, here's the thing. All these rule books, all these rules, are have always been vastly um, not opposed by Parliament, but supported by Parliament. So them going all of a sudden, oh, um, we need to diverge from the uh, European Union, then you have to ask the question, why do you want to diverge? What about, what are these policies that are so egregious that you want to diverge from? This is one of the things that these, uh, particularly these people driving Brexit, do not want to talk about. Because as we already know, it's these, this is the weakening of workers' rights, uh, safety standards, food standards, Everything that people would vastly disagree on are now at risk. Uh, so here we go. So I am also uh, 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 upsended that our negotiating approach 
will be just lead uh, lead to further demands for concessions. Of course, this is a complex area of judgment, and it is possible that you are right and I am wrong. However, uh, in the event that it seems to me that the national interest requires a Secretary of State in my department that is an enthusiastic believer in your approach, not merely a reluctant conscript. Uh, while I've been grateful for you to the opportunity to serve, it is with great regret that I attend my resignation from the cabinet with immediate effect, yada, yada, yada. So, essentially, he basically goes, uh, yeah, I'm getting out because I don't agree with the direction, which is basically... Um, Davis, David Davis was a hard Brexiteer. Um, he doesn't agree with the uh, soft uh, Brexit that was basically approved at the cabinet meeting. All these uh, things that Theresa May has said are basically, well, hold on, that's the single market. That's basically re remaining in the single market. And the idea that we should be able to diverge, again, without... But we will be punished for doing so, by the way, if we diverge. So make no mistake that um, we are in an incredibly weak negotiating position. We have always been an incredibly weak negotiating position. Um, people, these hard Brexiteers, as I've said from the very beginning, are driven by this ideal ideology that we are um, secretly somehow this incredibly great... Uh, trading nation that has been holed back by the EU when the EU has done nothing but prop up our GDP. Remember, when we joined the um, the beginnings of the European Union, our GDP had been falling literally in constant freefall by 10% every decade. It was when we joined the European uh, Union, or the start of it, that was when that free fall stopped. It leveled off and then we climbed. We have gone from being one of the fastest G7 growing nations to now the slowest. And this is only when we are, you know, getting ready to leave. So what happens when we actually leave? That situation doesn't change. We are going to be screwed. And I have said this from the very beginning. Everything you know, the Leave campaign said about leaving was right. We are damaging our eco economy, not just short term, but incredibly long term for the rest of our time as we are outside the European Union. And being outside the European Union at this moment is incredibly stupid. So, there you go.